So this is a two-year-old girl who has a cataract of the left eye. Uh, the right eye is normal. Uh, the mother reports that the cataract has been there noticeable for at least a few months. And there's also a left exotropia suggesting that the vision has been impaired uh, for some time by this cataract. A lot of this cataract is uh, nuclear, but there's also a significant posterior element. We'll be using Vision Blue in this case, and so we're putting some air into the anterior chamber and then injecting our Vision Blue beneath the air onto the anterior lens capsule to help with our visualization given the denseness of this cataract. I like to make the side port paracentesis infrotemporally if possible, and you can see that we're working through that right now. Uh, once the capsule is stained, uh, the viscoelastic is being placed in uh, to displace the dye and the air bubble. We'll be making our main incision superiorly through clear cornea just anterior to the termination of the limbal vessels. This is uh, mostly a uniplanar, somewhat biplanar incision. And using a bent tip needle cystotome to initiate our anterior capsulotomy, which we will complete with uh, utrata forceps. Uh, in this particular case, we don't have a small incision capsulorexis forceps available to us, uh, but that would certainly be an option. Benefit of that would be able to uh, keep the incision smaller. And you can see how much the tripan blue assists with visualization during this uh, capsulotomy. Being only two years of age, you know, one has to be careful to continuously direct this capsulotomy tear back in towards the middle so that we can avoid any radial extensions. The anterior capsule of uh, young children is very elastic, tends to want to go radial. So uh, you want to direct it centrally, but you also want to keep plenty of viscoelastic in the anterior chamber to keep that anterior lens capsule uh, flat. We're doing some gentle uh, hydrodissection here. You'd have to be careful about this if there's any question about the uh, posterior capsule being involved. And now we're partially closing the incision so that we don't have too much egress of fluid during the uh, lensectomy portion. And again, that's where if you have the small incision capsule rexus forceps, you don't need to have a larger wound for the utrata forceps and you can keep the incision more watertight. Uh, but here we've used retratas in a 2.5 millimeter incision, so now we're putting a temporary suture to approximate the corneal edges and maintain our anterior chamber. I like to use an anterior chamber maintainer as it frees up both of my hands for the vitrector. And here you can see our viscoelastic has flushed out. Uh, largely using aspiration to remove the lens material. Uh, sometimes you have to use the cutter to get a particularly stubborn piece of cortex or if uh, some of the nuclear material is a little more dense. But in general, we're trying to use uh, aspiration here. A lot of times these uh, white cataracts are uh, progressive. They start with some kind of posterior capsule abnormality, and that seems to be the case here. There's a small opening in the pre-existing opening in the posterior capsule beneath this calcific area. Um, so that didn't happen during the surgery. Uh, that's just where the uh, cataract has probably come from. It's a good chance this was a posterior lenticonus type cataract with some thinness of the posterior capsule that progressively weakened over time. And uh, as a result, fluid started passing into the lens and it became opaque and uh, calcified here. Alternatively, this could have been a posterior polar cataract. And this eye seems to be of normal size, uh, so certainly whatever cataract uh, is here probably was not very advanced in terms of being a congenital cataract. Most likely this is a progressive pre-existing condition, such as a posterior lenticonus or posterior polar cataract. So we're putting a little viscoelastic in here and uh, We've got plenty of capsular support here, so placing an IOL will, will not be a problem. You can see the anterior capsular rexus is intact, where I'm indicating, uh, so there's space to put the lens in. 
So what you can do here is uh, place the ILL with the haptics oriented so that they remain covered by the capsular excess. Prior to starting the procedure, we did biometry and keratometry and axial length measurements. So we've selected a lens to give us a post-operative refraction of plus, approximately plus two to allow for some uh, myopic shift over time. And one of the nice things about this lens, you can see it opens very slowly. So when you have these posterior capsule or anterior capsular abnormalities, you can very gently place the lens and uh, get them situated without extending any radial tears in the capsules. And now that the lens is secure in the bag, I'm going to, uh, again, kind of reapproximate this wound so that we can uh, do some additional cleanup of the posterior capsule. So we have our wound stabilized here, and now we're going to go back in with the vitrectomy handpiece. And what we're doing is we're reaching behind the lens implant, and we're going to do a primary posterior capsulotomy and some limited anterior vitrectomy to clear the visual axis. And you see that calcific area is uh, being removed. It's really adherent part of the posterior capsule. So it, it was going to have to be cut open regardless. And we just slowly move around in, uh, in circles, removing vitreous. It's very difficult to see the vitreous, of course. Uh, so some of this is, especially in young children like this, so uh, some of this is just a matter of spending some time in the central visual axis to remove that vitreous. If you want to use a high cut rate, I would say uh, 500 is a minimum, and I actually like to use cut rates that are more like 1250 to 2500 uh, so that we limit any pulling of the vitreous in, the, in these young children. They have such a dense vitreous. You also want to try and limit how high you go up on the aspiration while you're doing that. You can see our visual axis is looking pretty clear. What we're doing in this case now is I'm capturing the uh, IOL optic into that posterior capsular opening. This positions the lens at the same plane as it would be if it was in the bag. So you don't really need to make any lens calculation adjustments also helps to uh, prevent lens epithelial cell migration across the lens surface. And you can see there, uh, towards the end, I also enlarged the anterior capsular opening just a bit. And so I just want to summarize what we did here. This is a unilateral cataract in a child with a white lens. We found that the back of the lens was a calcified plaque involving the posterior capsule. and. Uh, we did not want to remove the entire plaque. Uh, that would have meant removing the entire posterior capsule or a large portion of it. So we put the lens into the bag with the posterior optic capture with the haptics inside the bag. This way the anterior and posterior capsules will fuse, but then the optics will remain central. I'm just checking the lens to see if it's captured posteriorly. And if the chamber is formed, I'm going to check the wounds and now I'm going to give subconjunctival injections and that is the end of our surgery.